Hey there, everybody. So we are going to finish putting our wall scroll together. So here I have my finished magnolia painting with the tea wash and it has completely dried. It's been at least 24 hours. So I know that my painting is not in any danger of getting wet. I have a piece of the large drawing paper that I gave you. It's a half sheet of drawing paper. It should be approximately 18 inches long by 12 inches wide. Mine happens to have this little curly Q edge, but I'm not worried about that. You can take that edge off if you have it, because you do not want that to get in the way of our measurements. And it just easily pulls aside like that. Where did I put my trash bag? Up oh, there it is. So, first thing I want to do is find the center of my long piece of drawing paper lengthwise. So if your drawing paper is 18. What's half of 18? Nine, that's right. So I'm gonna place a mark at the nine very, very lightly with a pencil. I'm gonna do this at least three times, one in the middle and two on either side. Then I line those three dots up with my ruler and ever so lightly, I'm not pressing, I literally am just, see, I'm just letting the pencil float over there. The faintest of faint lines, because we're, this is going to show, so we don't want to see it. You notice how I made my dots closer to the middle, so they would be covered up, and I did my line super, super faint. That's going to show me where the center of this is, up and down. And I want to find the center of my piece. I've trimmed a little bit of the edges off. So this is 12 and a half. So 12 and a half, that's going to be six and a quarter. It's going to be right about here. I'm going to put the tiniest little pencil dot right there, just so I can tell where that is. And again, I'm just putting the tiniest little mark, just so I can tell where it is. And I'm going to line those two marks up. I know that this is centered on my drawing paper. So I know that that's halfway up and down my drawing paper. I want to have a half inch border, maybe a three quarters inch. I don't know, half inch looks a little small. One inch looks too big. Let's go with three fourths of an inch. So I'm going to take my ruler. Now I've got my line horizontally so that I can see the top and the bottom half of my paper. I'm still long ways. See, I'm still long. I take my ruler on the side here. I'm going to do three quarters of an inch. If you don't remember how to do that on the ruler, let me remind you. You have your zero. There's your one. That's your whole number, right? Halfway in between that is this large line. That's your half. In between the halves, those are your quarters. So here you have one quarter or one over four, one half or one over two, three quarters or three over four. This is the line we're going for. It's one, two, three, four tiny marks below the one. So I'm laying this horizontally, making the faintest of faint marks at that three fourth of an inch line. I'm doing it three times, one at the top, one right along the line, and one at the bottom. I'm not going to do it on the other end yet, because this is wider than what I want. So again, I'm going to line my dots up so that it's horizontally lined up, and the edge of my paper should line up right there and be a half inch border. It does line up. My paper is not exactly straight along there, but that's just because of the way I cut it. I kind of cut it a little bit crooked. So I'll show you again how I did it. I have the two dots here. I'm lining the two dots up with this very faint horizontal line. And then I line the edge up with those four dots there. Four dots, three dots. So that what I have is I have an equal border on the top of my paper and the bottom of my paper, and I have a half inch border on this side. 
Now I got to find the half inch border from here so I can figure out where to cut the paper. So without moving my paper, I am putting a tiny little dot on the line where it ends. And I'm measuring one half inch away from that. There we go, one half inch. So now I'm going to cheat because I have this mark. I'm going to figure out how far that mark is from the edge. Let me switch rulers because this one's too big. So that mark that I just made, I line my ruler up. Of course, it's not an even mark. That would be too easy. It goes one, two, two and a half, but then I have one, two lines on top of that. So that I know that's 16s because there's 16 of those little dots in there. So I'm going to count. From the two, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of those marks. So that tells me that is two and ten over sixteen, which also happens to be five eighths. So that's called two and five eighths. It's this line right here. It's two of those tiny little, or I'm sorry, not two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of the tiny little marks below the three two tiny little marks above two and a half. So this is the mark that I'm going for right here on my ruler. So if I slide this down and keep the ruler at that same place, I can put a dot there, slide the ruler up, keep it at that same place, put a dot there. That's where the other edge of my piece is going to be. Now once again, I'm lining this up horizontally along that line. Make sure that it's lining up with all those dots. And that should give me a half inch border on this side. And it looks like it does. So I line my ruler up. Make sure all three of those dots that I made are lined up along my ruler. That mark. That's where I'm going to cut it off. Check that it has a half inch border on either side. Looks like it does. And I can get rid of my extra. So now it's already starting to look like a longer wall scroll right now. So when I center this again, see how we have a nice large border up here at the top large border at the bottom, and even half inch on both sides. So I'm going to make sure I erase these marks so that I can't see any of the marks on the outside edge. All right, now the hard part, getting glue onto this without ripping it. It's possible to use glue stick on the back of this, but I get really nervous about it, So especially when I get close to the edges. So I prefer to put glue on here. So in order to do that without getting glue around the borders, it's going to be very important for me to make sure that this is centered. Now i got to get lined up again now that I've moved my dots. All right, excellent. Lined up here. Lined up here. Okay. So we have to make a general box around here. So I'm going to very faintly put a tiny little mark at all four of these corners. Again, very lightly. I mean, as light as you possibly can. And I'm going to very lightly draw a box just inside of those lines. I'm going to do this up here so you can see it better. So here's my two dots. I'm going just below the dots and making the faintest of lines. Here's my, flip it around. Here's my two marks where the corner was. I'm going like an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch below that mark. I want to keep my lines inside so that they're hidden and they're going to be covered up when I'm done. Just inside of those marks. And I'm not pressing on this pencil at all because this rice paper is very thin. You do not want to have it show through the paper. Okay, that looks good. 
So I have the faintest of boxes. I'm going to erase out those dots. Make sure they're gone. And if you have a kneaded eraser handy, which I do not, you can use the kneaded eraser to lighten up those lines even more. I'm using a rubber eraser. I'm just tapping it up so I have the faintest of lines. I mean, you just barely see it at all. You want to have to really look for those lines. Okay, that looks better. Erase it out here in the middle too. Any lines that you still have down there, if you put glue on top of it, they're never getting lighter again. You will never get rid of them. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to glue inside of that box. Pull out my glue. And one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use this extra piece that I cut off kind of as a block. I'm going to put it over that line like that so it covers up that line. Ooh, I just moved my paper. I don't want to do that. And you might have somebody help you do this if you want to have them help hold down the, the paper while you glue. Oh, I moved it. And now I can get right up along that edge and go over the edge without worried about being worried about getting glue right on it. I'm going to move it. I'm going to do down here. Use this to cover up that line and glue right up against it. Very generous with this glue. You want your paper glistening with glue. Use the paper to cover it up so you don't get glue on the outside. Oh, I need to roll it up a little. Oh, see, it wants to move. This is where having somebody hold it down for you can be very helpful. Make sure I get that corner nice and good. Put this down here. Now I get in the middle. I need tornadoes. I need tornadoes. And move your head around in the light so you can see that you've covered everything. You don't want any dry spots, any dry spots at all. Oops, there. Moving my head around, making sure I don't have any spots that are really dry. You don't want any big chunks either. If you have any big chunks, pick them up with your finger. Them off the side. All right, that looks good. Now the most nerve-wracking part, putting it down. Again, if you want to get somebody to help you, awesome. I'm going to stand above it. I'm holding it in my hands lightly, loading it over those lines, checking, because remember there was one way it fit better than the other, this way. Checking it, looks good. Okay, now before you press this down, you're gonna start in the middle and you're gonna fan out. This is extremely light tissue paper, rice paper is. I'm going to take another piece of paper, put it on top. I can still see my center, right? I'm using the heel of my hand, gently pressing down outward like a sunburst. If you want, you can take a ruler, use that to help flatten it. And it's okay if you have a couple of wrinkles. That's just the nature of rice paper. See, I have a couple of wrinkles, that's okay. I'm using my ruler to press any of those air bubbles out. And you notice it made marks on this paper, that's okay. I don't mind having marks on this paper, it's, I don't want marks on that paper. So you see how there's a couple of little wrinkles in there? That's all right, but overall it looks pretty flat, looks pretty good. I can kind of see a pencil line under there, but 
really it's not that bad and already look it's starting to look like a wall scroll how professional that looks huh isn't this great okay now i gave you guys a big sheet of the decorative paper so if you want you can just do the whole background with the big sheet of paper i would suggest doing it similar to this where you have a large piece at the top and the bottom small piece at the other end i don't have any decor decorative paper here so i'm going to give myself a little bit of a border with this piece of paper just to make it look nice if you want to curl the paper around the dowel rod that i gave you you can absolutely do that all you have to do is take your dowel rod put it inside of the the paper here use your glue stick put some glue there put your dowel rod down and roll it around the dowel rod and then just hold it in place you can put a book or something on top of it until it's dry and once it's dry on one end then you can go ahead and curl it around and do the other and that's you can you can leave it like this with the decorative paper and mount it on the wall like that or you can get the dowel rod and do it and i'll show you what one would look like this is the look that we're going for now this is a, a store-bought scroll a blank scroll so see how they have they have more of the decorative paper at the top and the bottom less on the sides and then you have the the paper wrapped around the, the dowel rod here and you can attach a ribbon at the top or the bottom if you want. All right. So if you have any questions or you have any trouble, you can send me an email or find me on Zoom during my office hours from 12 to 1. All right. Thanks for watching.